Okay, so we want to talk about logical operators and and interestingly, interestingly enough, logical operators in C, C++, Java, JavaScript, and C Sharp are same. So this lecture I'm giving to you today, I'm giving it to you four other classes in case you want to decide to do them with me. Okay? So five classes, same lecture. All right. Actually, let me get a pen here. Pen. Or highlighter would be just as good. OK, what are logical operators? We call them either logical or Boolean. Same name used for same three operators. These are the operators that combine Boolean variables to produce a composite result. OK? And Boolean variables, what values do they have? True or false, only two, two values. OK? And the logical operators are two type, binary or unary. Two binaries and one unary. And binary operators are and, 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 or. Or is uh, coded by clicking on, uh, tapping on, or pressing the rightmost key under the backspace key. OK? So in your computer, you can see what is the rightmost key under backspace key, and shift. So that's the OR operator. In pseudocode, AND is called AND, OR is called OR. OK? The unary operator is just one, which is negation, which is exclamation, OR. Unix people call it bang. It's also called, in pseudocoding language, the NOT operator. OK? So uh, this. Uh, this, and this is the pseudocode names, this is the source code name, and, and this name, and this, these are the source code symbols, okay? So understand both of them, the pseudocode names and the source code symbols, because you'll be working with both from time to time. Okay, so why do we need logical operators? Any ideas? Okay, we are recording, so we're going to go. <laughs> logical operators are needed by computer programs to decide upon a software action to be taken when a combination of Boolean condition evaluates to true. Okay, and we'll see examples of some of them. And if that combination is not true, then we may want to provide for some alternate action. Okay, if combination of Boolean condition is false, then we may provide an alternate action, which is the else block. Okay, and we're going to so, show some pseudocode examples for the case when combination of Boolean condition is evaluating to true. Okay. Okay. Imagine that a state employee has Blue Cross health insurance through their job, but if they become 65 years of age then they can register in Medicare, and they can have Medicare insurance also. So in that case, doctor visit billing algorithm will look something like this. So algorithm when patient has two health insurances, if primary insurance equals equals Blue Cross and second insurance equals equals Medicare, then there there will be two parts to the bill. Bill one is amount bill to Blue Cross. Bill two is the amount bill to Medicare. And total bill will be combination of bill one and bill two. Okay. Notice I'm using the AND operator here in order to make sure that both of these conditions are true. And uh, if one of the condition for AND operator is false, the whole thing becomes false. Uh, we're going to show that to you pretty soon in something called truth table. And of course, this is one case. There could be additional cases where a person may just have only Blue Cross or only Med Medicare or none of them. So for those, we'll have to provide else and else if and all those things. Okay. So this is just one simple case. All right. 
making sense? All right. More on AND operator. Thus, AND operator selects a software action when two or more conditions are true. So, for example, going back, this algorithm of calculating the bill will be true if primary insurance equals to Blue Cross is true and secondary insurance equal to Medicare. Both are true. Okay. So, in previous example, we saw that billing software action when patient had two conditions that were true for them. These were the two conditions that primary insurance is equal to Blue Cross. This is true. And second insurance equal to Medicare, that is also true. When both of them were true, we had two portions of bill, bill one and bill two, and we add them up together, okay? Or operator is different. It allows selection of a software action when one or more of the multiple Boolean conditions are true. All of them don't have to be true. So imagine that I like to program my Siri on my iPhone to tell me if I can sleep late in the morning or not, okay? So programming code for such sleep late algorithm is like this. And that uses the OR operator. If day equals equals Saturday or day equals equals Sunday or day equals equals holiday, which could be national holiday or anything, else. Then Siri says sleep late. Else Siri says get up and go to work. Right? So in this case either of the three conditions could be true. This could be true and then Siri will say sleep late or it could be Sunday then Siri will say sleep late or day could be holiday and then Siri will say sleep late. If all are false then the whole thing will be false and Siri will say, get up and go to work. Okay? Any question? Okay. So we re-emphasize re the same fact. Notice that composite condition, this one, will result to true using the OR operator, of course. If either of the three components this is true, if this is true, or this is true, or this is true, if either one of the three is true, then this composite condition will become true, and Siri will say that you can sleep late. Okay? So that's the characteristic of OR operator, and we're going to prove that through one of the circuit diagrams. Okay, so now we're going to show through this electrical circuit how AND operator works. And a little bit later, we'll show how OR operator works, and then we'll show how NOT operator works. Okay? So, this is the circuit diagram here to simulate AND operator. In fact, whatever happens here exactly happens in the computer through a gate called AND, AND gate. Okay? Computers have a gate, digital gate called AND gate. And whatever we are showing here is really simulation of that action. But in order to understand this, we need to see this mapping. And mapping is this, that unconnected switch, X or Y, think of that as a Boolean false. So if I say, if, like in this figure, switch X is not connected, Y is not connected, I'll say Boolean X has a value of false and boolean y has a value of false. So that's one mapping. Connected switch will be considered boolean true. So if I connect this switch by the, like make it like this, then x will become true. Okay? And then bulb is representing x and and y, the combined condition of x and y. Okay? So bulb is x and and y. And the mapping of bulb is that if bulb is off, then it's considered false. And if bulb is lit up, then it's considered true. Okay? All right. Now let's see three, actually four different situations we can have. First situation is this. And this is, by the way, this is called a truth table. And we're going to do it in four parts and then combine it together. 
So this time you can tell me, what is the value of switch X right now? False. False, False. exactly. Y? False. False. Bulb is X, N, and Y. This is my bulb. And if bulb is off, then it's false. So bulb cannot be lit up in this stage because there's no current flowing. So if X is false, Y is false, then X, N, and Y is false too. Okay? <clears throat> so I showed earlier that a person had Blue Cross insurance and Medicare. So if both are false, if they have no insurance, then hey, you can break the bill into two parts. The billing algorithm will not execute. So that's from there. All right, let's look at the second part of this. If we connect one of the switch, like I connected X here, so X becomes true. But Y is unconnected, Y remains false. Will bulb lit up or stay off? Stay off. Stay off, exactly, no path for current. So X and, and Y is still false. And the reverse is the same thing. I can disconnect X, which becomes false, but connect Y, which is true, and bulb is still not going to light up. So X, N, and Y still remains false. So with AND operator, only way you'll get a true result or bulb will light up is this. X is true. Y is true. Only then bulb will light up. So only way when you combine two Boolean variables, X and Y, through AND operator, only way this result will come out true, both have to be true. And the circuit simulates that for us. OK? And combining these four, we can just have this composite truth table that if X is false and Y is false, we get the false. X, N, and Y is false. If X is true, Y is false, still we get false. X, N, and Y is still false. If X is false, Y is true, we still get X, N, and Y is false. Only time X, N, and Y is true when all the inputs are true. Okay. Only time N, N operator will give you a true composite result is when all of its operands are true. Okay. This is called a truth table here for AND operator. You should remember it. You should memorize it. It's not very hard to do if you remember the diagram and four parts of this diagram. And that's, that's in the PowerPoint as well as the ebook has that too. So everything I'm saying here is in the PowerPoint and ebook e both. All right. This, and this video will have that as well. Okay. Let's look at the OR operator. Okay, by the way, AND operator I just discussed and its truth table will work in all these languages. Possibly in more than that, but certainly I know for sure. It might work in PHP and Python too, but in these languages it will work. So if you learn this thing, you're, you've already learned into these five languages. C, C++, C Sharp, Java, and JavaScript. Okay, for OR operator, we have this kind of circuit diagram which is in parallel. So we have two switches. This is my X. Parallel to that is Y. And mapping rem remains the same. That unconnected X or Y is, represents Boolean false. Connected X and Y represent Boolean true. Okay, this should be OR, by the way. So can you make that correction in your handouts? This should be X uh, OR Y. So my PowerPoint is wrong in that. So on this one, so bulb is, in this case, X or Y, and bulb off is false, and bulb lit up is true. So there's an error here. You just, this is X or and Y, okay? Okay, so let's look at that. X is false, Y is false. Is there a way for current to flow? No. no. So false, false, false. So when X and Y are false, X or Y will also be false. Okay? But something interesting happened in this case if I connect one of the switches. There you go. I connect this switch. Now there is this path for current to flow. 
See, I'm draw gonna draw the path. See? So in this case, bulb will light up. Bulb will light up. So that's where O operator is quite different from AND. That I made one input to be true, other could remain false, but X or Y will be true. Okay? And that, again, there's a logic gate in computers which is called an OR gate. Okay? Which works just like this. If I make this false and make this true, same thing. This time, of course, current doesn't flow through this one, but it has another alternate path, like this, like this. So bulb lights up again. Okay. So x could be false, but as soon as y is true, x or and y will also be true. Okay. And of course, if you make them both connected, both are true, well then this node here acts like one wire. Okay? And then your current is flowing like this through this node and like that. So in that case, true anyway. Okay? So we combine these four together, we get this kind of truth table. Only time OR operator will give you false when all the inputs are false. But as soon as one becomes true, or both become true, then it gives you the true result. Okay? Make sense? All right. Last operator, the node or negation. Pseudo code is called not. Source code is called bang, or the exclamation. And it's used that sometime a Boolean condition is better coded as negation of some other condition. Okay? In such situations, the negation is used on an operand. And this is unary because it just needs one operand only. And what negation does, it flips a true result into false and false to true. Okay? I use this a lot in loops. Uh, not so much in if and else, but when we do loops, you'll see use of this one. And this is the circuit for the negation operator. This one uses a transistor. Here's a transistor. And transistor uh, has two ways to apply voltage, because transistor has three terminals, so you could apply two voltages to the transistor. One voltage is here, the battery. Another voltage gets applied to this terminal here. Basically, you can think of that this terminal got a, a connected to another battery, actually, plus, minus, something like that. Okay. And this would be some reason, reasonable voltage, 5, 6 volt, 10 volt, something like that. Okay. So here, since we have unary operation, there's just one switch. Unary, just one switch. Okay. And the same thing, switch X unconnected will be false, switch X connected will be true, and bulb on will be true, and bulb off will be false. So same, same thing, except we are using the transistor. So now we look at the truth table for the negation operator, part one. So in this condition, what is the value of the Boolean operator here? False, because it's unconnected. When transistor is unconnected, what happens is that this voltage applied to this terminal flows through the bulb and bulb lights up. Okay? So in this case, if input is X is false, negation of X will be actually true. Okay? But as soon as I connect the X, you'll see the effect in the next slide. What happens is that transistor becomes conducting and it short circuits this voltage. Okay. As soon as you connect the switch, transistor becomes conducting actually. And short circuit that voltage and bulb goes off. Which means when X is true, negation of X will be false. Okay. So it just flips the uh, type from true to false, false to true. And that's the composite truth table. If X is false, the negation of X will be true. If X is true, 
negation of x will be false. So we have these three truth tables, one for AND operator, one for OR, those are binary operators, and one for negation, which is unary. And they're not hard to remember. I mean, negation is very easy. It just changes true to false, false to true. Other two, if you can just remember those circuit diagram, which are in your PowerPoint as well as in the ebook, uh, you shouldn't be having a difficult time remembering that. Okay, so we presented true table for AND operator, OR operator, and negation operator. We have shown the electrical analogs to ascertain that you understand their workings. For efficient programming, truth tables should be memorized, and memorization becomes easier. You should remember the circuit diagram related to each one of them. Okay? Once again, we show the truth, truth table for AND operator. Everything remains false unless all the inputs are true. OR operator, everything is false when all the inputs are false, but as soon as one of them become true, we get the true. And the negation, negation of false will be true, and negation of true will be false. Okay, okay we'll show you use of AND and OR operators, one of them today. Negation maybe when we start to work with the loops. So let's do that. Uh, and show this card. Okay, so you have seen, actually you have not seen that yet. Let's say we want to uh, give a grade to a student based on the semester percentage. And we'll assume that semester percentage is some integer number, 80%, 90%, 95%, or something like that. So generally you have seen this kind of threshold for grading. And to keep it in video, I'll just do it here. And I'll type big. So you've seen this kind of thing that if 90 is greater than score, I'll just say percent. and percent itself is greater than or equal to 90, then grade is A. Okay, actually I should make two columns here. Range of semester percent and tab grade. So, in this case, grade is A. And meaning of this is, no, actually, 100, sorry, 100. Actually, we don't even need that. Just, this is enough. If percent you got is greater than 90 or equal to 90, then you get an A grade. So, so really, that's the simple meaning, right? Everybody understand that? Okay. But if it's in certain range, like range of 90 to 80, and the way that works is that if 90 is greater than percent, but percent itself is greater than or equal to 80, then your grade will be B. Okay. So meaning of that is that percent is actually smaller than 90. If 90 as a number will be greater than this number, then obviously this number is less than 90, right? Make sense? And on the other hand, this number is either equal to 80 or greater than 80, then the grade is B. And we can do the same thing with the C and D. So range for C and D will be this that if 80, number 80 is greater than the percent, but it's in the range of 70 to 80, then grade is C, and threshold of 70 to 60 will be the D, 
and finally if percent is less than 60 then the grade is F so we work with these thresholds okay so this is the mathematical representation <clears throat> let's try to represent that into Java source code so first one is easy to code let's say I declare some variable uh, character grade set that to some zero length uh, some blank character so first one is easy to grade I'll say if percent is greater than or equal to 90 then I'll set the grade to A. easy to do is the second one we have to think about that if this is my mathematical representation how would I convert that into Java source code and the question is to combine this condition that percent is less than 90 or 90 is uh, greater than the percent so in second one I'll have something like this that if so I already know the first condition that percent is less than 90 or 90 is greater than uh, percent and you can quote it either way you can just say it percent less than 90 because if, we, if C equal to 90, then I have to give an A, so it has to be less than 90. Then some operator in between, okay? Let's think about, we'll think about that in a second. And the second one is that percent is greater than or equal to 80. Then grade will be equal to B. But the question is, which operator should I use here? I have choice of two binaries, AND operator and OR operator. Okay, any, any other opinions? Heather said AND. Any other opinions? Can we use OR? Most people, it is correct, we have to use AND operator. Okay, not here. Right here. And the reason for that is, if you put OR in here, every number in the world will make it true. Let's try the OR operator. Let's, let's look at it with the OR operator. Uh, with AND, uh, with the AND I fix the range. That it has to be less than 90 and it has to be greater than or equal to 80. So it must fall in that range, basically. And if it's integer, it must be in the range of 80 to 89. So using AND operator, I fix the range. But if I had an OR, let's actually let me do another page here. Let's look at the danger of using OR operator in this condition. So OR operator, if this is true or this is true, then whole thing will be true, right? Correct? Well, Notice that this condition will be true for all the numbers in the world from 89 and below. You can go up to minus infinity, it doesn't matter. This condition will be true, percent less than 90 will be true for all the numbers 89 to minus infinity. And on the other hand, percent greater or equal to 80 will be true for all the numbers from 80 to positive infinity. This is very important that you cannot use OR, or operator for range selection. It just doesn't work. If you put conditions like that, this will be true for every number in the universe. Okay? So don't make the mistake of using OR operator when you want to select a range uh, that number should fall in certain range. Is that, Aaron, is that clear to you? What we just talked about? Okay, make sure you know that because you might spend hours doing this and not come out with the right result if you don't understand what I'm just saying. Okay? All right. 
So it's clear to us, for range selection, we must use AND operator. Okay? So rest is actually pretty clear. We can do for C and D, exact same thing. Just change the range according to these thresholds here. And so for C, I'll do this. So this will be less than 80. And this will be 70. And for D, we'll just change the threshold again between 70 and 60. So for D, it'll be less than 70, greater than or equal to 60, will be D. And for F, it's actually pretty simple. If percent is less than 60, then grade is F. So for F and A, it's pretty simple. In one case, for case of A, it has to be more than 90 or equal to 90. For F, less than 60. In between, you've got to select a range. And range selection is done using the end operator. Okay? So writing this into a Java program is actually very simple. We'll start the Eclipse and do it there. Okay. Little delay, a little slower in Eclipse. <clears throat> but it'll come up. Coming up, coming up. I think when the videos are made, the whole computer slows down. And that's part of it, I think. So it's loading workbench uh, so slowly. Okay. Keep going, keep going. There you go. New Java project, uh, grading using if structures, finish, right click, new class, main class, main method, finish. Okay, so in this case, we're going to use, take the user input for the semester percent, right? That's used later. So I need to create a scanner, uh, keyboard, equal to new scanner, uh, system.in. And I need an import, so I just import the scanner top there. I prompt them for their semester percent. So system, oops, this that'll work. Enter semester percent. And since we are taking integer only, we tell them the whole number only. And we define a variable int percent and that is keyboard dot which input method I'm going to use next int correct <coughs> whole number next int and now I got the input I could do my thresholds really it's actually pretty simple I can just copy and paste that code for uh, I need to declare that, of course. My quotes will have to be changed because quotes don't transfer from Microsoft Word to uh, Java program, but the rest will work. So quotes are not going to work. I'll just have to do the course again. And same thing here. New quotes. 
other than that it's okay change the codes And in a minute, I'll uh, sorry, I'll format that. Uh, format will make it look nicer than that. Okay, you can type your code any way you like. Okay, I forgot the semicolon here. All right, but you can do right click, source, and format, and it'll, it'll make it very pretty. Okay. So don't worry how you type the code. Right click, uh, source, format. It'll just fix your whole uh, code. Won't be sloppy looking anymore. Now I can print their semester grade, right? Your semester grade is, let's print the grade here. Okay, we'll run this program. So let's say I enter semester percent 91. So in that case, let's look at the 91 greater than 90 is true. So it's going to quit right here, grade A. It will test these, of course, but 91 uh, less than 90 is false, and 91 even if this is true though, what is the characteristic of AND operator? If one of them is false, then the whole thing is false. So for 91, this is false, then the whole thing is false actually, even though second one is true. And same thing happens here, 91 less than 80 is false, 91 less than 70 is false, and 91 less than 60 is false. So none of the others execute. Because and operator, if one input is false, the whole thing is false. Okay, that's why you get the result. Uh, if I press the enter key, the grade is A. Okay. We'll enter something in the range of 80 and 90. Let's <clears throat> do it twice. Take off from here to here. This time I enter 85, which is in the range of 80 and 90. So grade is B, and the reason is very simple. 85 greater than 90 is false, so it will not do this one. 85 less than 90 is true, and 85 greater than or equal to 80 is also true. So in this I got both conditions to be true. So it'll set the grade to B. But now 85 less than 80 is false. So this part is false. So even though this is true, the whole thing is false. And same thing everywhere else. So that's why uh, this time only this part executes. Others don't. So we were able to do the range selection. So get that result. Okay? You can check it out for C, D, and F. When you go home, you can do it. Question? Okay. So that's how you can use the AND operator. All right? Okay. So this works, of course, not a problem. But there's a little bit of a slowdown in this program. And the slowdown is this that let's say I had percent equal to 91. Then ideally, 91 greater than 90 is true. So really, my job is done right here. But look what it's going to do. It's still going to test this one, that 91 greater than 90 would find it false, but it still has to test it. OK? It still has to test this one, 91 less than 80 would be false, but it still test, has to test it. Same thing here, it still has to test that, and it still has to test that. 
So even though the job was done right here, it still has to make one test, second test, third test, four extra tests. That slows down your program. So one technique to reduce the slowdown is you can do something called if else, like we did for the salary uh, calculation program. That if something is true, you execute the if part, otherwise you execute the else part. And that's actually very easily done in this case. Uh, what I'll do, I'll actually create another uh, program. Just call it, let's say, new class. Uh, main class 2. And let's call it main class two. Oh, where's that? Okay, so here all I have to do really is very simple. I just put an else here, and I put an else here, and I put an else here. And I put an else here. And last one, you don't even need to even check. Else is enough for the last one. But notice all of a sudden, this is what happens, actually. If my percent was 91, 91 greater than 90 is true. Grade set to A. Notice the rest of that is under else block. And you do remember that, that out of if and else, only one can execute. So everything else is skipped. All of a sudden, you removed four extra comparisons and speeded up your program that many times, as far as the comparison part is concerned. OK? What we just did is called nested if and else. It's much faster. In those cases, where out of many conditions, you should have only one outcome. All you have to do is take a structure like this, put an else between uh, each subsequent continuous, each uh, if that is next to each other. Okay. Now, if percent was 85, well, 85 is still going to have to do this comparison, of course. 85 greater than 90 is false, so it won't execute that. Then it enters the else block. Then it compares. Uh, 85 less than 90 is true, and 85 greater than or equal to 90, 80 is also true. It'll do the grade B, but then rest of that is under else block, so all that is skipped. So this time you reduced at least one more, com uh, two comparisons rather than, I mean, it was fastest for the something 90 and above. But still, in this case, also you save time. Only case it doesn't save the time when the grade is DF. Then it has to do all those. That's one part of it. That's one speed improvement. There's a second improvement also, of course. That Notice that if, if you score percent is, let's say, 85, then it's already tested that percent is neither equal to 90 nor greater than that. So if percent is neither 90 nor greater than 90, what possible value can it have? Less than 90, right? That means I don't need to test for this. I already know. It's not, it's not going to get here if it's not less than 90. So I can remove that extra comparison also. That's the second speed improvement. Don't need to really bother with this because already this test already ascertained that it is actually less than 90. So you can drop this first comparison from all the conditions too. There you go. Gone, N not needed. Gone, not needed. Gone, not needed. Two speed improvements you can do when you use nested if and else. Okay? One is only one will execute. For uh, A grade, it's a big improvement, but subsequent also is, is like more and more improvement. And second, you don't need to do two dual comparisons. Okay. 
So this program is called nested if and else. Uh, and works beautifully for those cases when out of many outcomes you need to execute just once. Okay. Uh, Ebook has uh, more stuff on that shows a bunch of boxes that you can go from one box to another to another and I'm just going to quickly show you that. So let's go here. There's a visual, better visual representation of Nested if and else, basically. Okay, selection. We can look at the pseudocode also, uh, the flowchart, okay? So flowchart shows the same thing. I get the score, which is really percent in this case. If the score is greater than or equal to 90, if that is true, I set the grade to A, and then print the grade and end of the program right there. So notice this entire false branch here is skipped, okay? So when you go home, print this page from the ebook and just Try to convince yourself that if score is greater than 90, only this executes and all this stuff is skipped. Okay? When a score is 85, for example, 85 greater than 90 is false, so I'll go into this side. And then 85 greater than 80 is true, so I'll do grade equal to B. Then I'll be skipping all this stuff here. And so on. Okay? So this can also tell you that how speed improvement takes place. Uh, another way to look at that is this, these boxes here. Actually, I might probably have another one there. Okay, do I? Uh, yeah, there you go. See. Another way to visualize will be this box here. If score is greater than or equal to 90, then I'm printing A. And this entire block here in the blue region is skipped. But if score is less than 90, then I will enter this blue box test for if a score is greater than 80. If that is true, then I'll print B, an entire yellow box is skipped. Okay? If score is, let's say, 75, then this is false, this is false. Then I'll enter this yellow box, and if score is 75, 75 greater than 70 is true, I'll print C, and this green box is skipped. Okay? So, Three or four different ways to look at it. Make sure you understand why it is faster, actually. Okay? So that's the nested if and else. Uh, so what I'm going to do now, print these two for you. So you have a copy of these two. So file, print, two, three, four. Can somebody go to printer and distribute them while I work on this recording, just a little bit? So that's the first one, and this is the nested one here. And I'll just work on my recording now. So that's the conclusion of logical operators, standalone if, and nested if and else. Okay? So.